Hello and welcome to Sweet Spot DFS. This is a DFS strategy video for the 2021 Palmetto Championship. Now, if you aren't aware, I put a DFS preview video out there yesterday, basically covering the entire tournament and everything you need to know about it. Highly encourage you to go to watch that. This video basically is intended to narrow down player pools from what we learned yesterday uh, to make lineup building easier. And I do that by covering tee time pairings. Because as a competitive golfer myself, I believe that playing in a good group, a good scoring group, it just feeds off energy. And it's called drafting. You draft off of players and you tend to play better sometimes. It's not always, but it does seem to help a lot of these PGA Tour players. Of course, the opposite can happen if, if you know, two golfers in your group do play uh, poorly. You can slide that direction as well. Again, it's not concrete, but it's still a good way to try to find an advantage. So we're going to be covering that. Of course, we'll have to talk about the sweet spot score. That's how I talk about the tee time pairings. Um, and then I did grass stats yesterday in the preview. Usually I do those in the strategy video. Uh, so we're going to skip past that. And we're also going to skip past, usually I covered uh, anchor buckets. We talk about the bucket system in the preview. We go over our favorite buckets here in the strategy video. But that requires looking at stats. And since it's a one-off tournament, I don't have that. So we're not going to be looking at anchor buckets. We're really going to be focusing on finding anchor plays based off of our tee time pairings. And then using the optimizer to build lineups. So again, that's going to be focusing on the sweet spot score. Trying to build some of our best lineups. We can still use conditionals when it comes to buckets. Obviously, I've assigned buckets to some of these golfers. So we'll take a full look. At all of that i think this video might be a little shorter than usual because we just don't have a lot of stuff to to cover as we typically do as always timestamps can be found in the description below they can also be found on youtube's progress bar all i got to do is hover over that progress bar you will find timestamps that way so let's go ahead and get into this thing the very first thing i want to do is actually cover the withdrawals that have happened uh if you weren't aware I mean, I kind of mentioned this in the little intro there. We had qualifying Monday. A lot of the golfers in the field played in those qualifiers. I actually updated my spreadsheet to show you guys which ones played and succeeded and which ones played and did not. Um, just to give you a heads up of who might be a little fatigued coming into this tournament and who might withdraw. But either way, we've had four and I'll, I'll go ahead and cover those. So Friday through Sunday, we already had all of these withdrawals. We know about those. Monday, Danny Willett withdrew, not because he was at a qualifier, because he had appendicitis. So if you weren't aware about that, that's why Danny Willett is out. And then Tuesday, Sung Kang, he withdrew because he qualified for the U.S. Open. Nate Lashley withdrew. I'm not sure if he qualified. I'm sure he did. And Peter Malnati also withdrew. I know he qualified. So I anticipate a few more withdrawals, but apparently, uh, well, I shouldn't say apparently, since it hasn't happened yet, maybe there won't be withdrawals. I think some of those guys that did play and qualified still want to secure a tour card and need to play in this tournament. That's why they're here. Uh, just so you know, those guys played 36 holes on Monday and they probably played the week before. Let's go ahead. Let's actually just talk about those golfers. So I'm going to go ahead and remove the blanks. So anything that's blank, they were not at a qualifier Monday or Tuesday, not by my sources. Uh, I Some of that might be wrong. I only got notable information in those that actually qualified. So maybe there are some lesser known golfers that weren't quote unquote notable. That's probably why I don't see it. But let's go ahead. Let's remove the blanks. And then first sort out by uh, U.S. qualifiers or U.S. Open qualifiers. Those that did qualify. Uh, our very first guy is Johnny Vegas. Here, let's see. Can we actually look? Okay, perfect. Here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to hide all this information so we can look at last week's stats. Uh, because these golfers who made the cut. So if, if it's an 85, that's a missed cut. Anything lower than 85 means they made the cut last week at the memorial and then this y is showing you they qualified at the u.s open qualifier on monday so they played 36 holes monday they played 72 holes thursday through friday and then on 
Thursday through Sunday. And then Monday came around and did their U.S. Open qualifier. And now we're coming to this tournament to play hopefully a Thursday through Sunday. So perhaps we want to pump our brakes on some of these golfers that did that. That's a lot of golf. Um, so I'm, I'm showing you guys what who those golfers are. Johnny Vegas, he, he qualified on Monday. Did not play last week, but we have Martin Laird, Rafael Cabrera-Bello, and JT Poston. I can tell you all three of these golfers had to shoot really low in order to make the U.S. Open. So you could, I don't know, I don't want to say piggyback off of their decent success at the Memorial to go along with their low scores. Perhaps they'll bring that into this tournament, but I don't know, guys. I think for me, I might be a little bit, I'm wary of this uh, of these golfers. So I, I don't think I'll, I'll end up doing that. We can see some of these other guys. I'm not going to talk about all of them. I just want to talk about the guys that did play at the Memorial to go along with qualifying. Bo Hogue, uh, Patrick Rogers. There might be some fatigue there, but Patrick Rogers only played Thursday, Friday. He missed the cut. So maybe he's a little bit fresher, but, you know, Bo Hogue, he's actually a young guy, right? How old is he? I'll, I'll, I'll show you their ages too. There we go. So age will be in this column. Hogue is actually 32. Okay. Um... I don't know if, if you want to look into that, but I'm a little wary there. And then we have golfers who did not qualify for the U.S. Open. So I think some of these guys, if they win, can get invited. I'm not sure if it's like automatic, though, if they win, they're invited to the U.S. Open. I think there's a couple spots left. So perhaps, I don't know. If you know that answer, go ahead. Chime in the comments down below. Um, just so everyone is aware, but as far as I know, I think it's only open to a few golfers and I could be entirely wrong. Usually the, the week before a major championship, you can still qualify for it by winning. So let's go ahead with that premise and say, these guys can still make the U S open if they win. Uh, but either way, they still had to play 36 holes on Monday. They did not qualify. So some of these guys that did play might still be a little tired and a little bummed out. Um, Pat Kazire missed the cut at the Memorial. So he had Saturday, Sunday off. Um, uh, maybe he's a little rested. Lucas Glover, the brand ambassador, the member at this tournament. We've all talked about him. Um, he also tried to qualify, did not make it and then made the weekend at the Memorial. So he could be a little fatigued. We have Sepp Straka. He missed the cut. Let's just talk about the guys who didn't miss the cut. Nick Taylor could be a little tired. He wasn't on my radar anyways. Hudson Swafford, Jason Duffner, uh, withdraw JB Holmes. Now, when I watched him, they showed like the Twitter feed or like one of the very first uh, feeds that the PJ Tour Live did. He looked very ginger. Like he, his back looked really bad. So like he could barely bend over to pick up the ball. He kind of had that like stiff walk whenever he was walking. I'd be wary of J.B. Holmes. If you are into someone like that, I'm not. Uh, but, yeah, definitely don't want to play him. And that's it. So, really, there aren't many golfers to talk about. It was Duffner, Hudson Swafford, Nick Taylor, Lucas Glover, Bo Hogue, J.T. Poston, uh, Rafael cabrera Vale, and Martin Laird. Only eight golfers who tried qualifying, either did or did not make it, and made the weekend at the Memorial. So those are your eight golfers that have golfed a lot of holes. Perhaps, you know, fade them if you think that's going to affect their score. I kind of in that boat where I don't trust, I don't really trust them that much. I'm not going to do a complete fade, but I, I just don't trust them that much. Put it this way. I don't trust them to play well as, uh, let's put it, hold on. Put it this way, I trust Dustin Johnson showing up at this tournament, playing well, almost twice as much as I trust those other golfers, um, having the longevity to play, well, not longevity, but the energy to put in four good rounds at this tournament, and then also prepare for the U.S. Open. I, that's how, that's how much I, how strongly I feel about those golfers who could be fatigued. All right, let's move on. Let's go to the sweet spot score. It's the only way we can talk about the um, uh, tee time pairings. And 
I want to first start out by showing you what the score entails. So I'm always looking at official world golf ranking. I think it's a really good tool to use, a really good stat to use to determine who's been playing, you know, well over a kind of a short period of time. These these scores can fluctuate and I can't remember what the buffer is. I feel like it's 2 weeks. I could be wrong, but obviously if someone wins, they can move up quite a bit. I think Patrick Cantlay uh, moved up four spots for winning last week. He was, I think, already in the top 10, and now he's like six, I believe. I'm not, don't quote me on that, but I think it's something similar to that. So either way, uh, it is somewhat recent, so I like that. Having those points show you who the golf, like the better golfers in this field are, it's a huge up, one up. So I use that. Uh, I'm also looking at Bermuda stats, looking at the best golfers in the field. Now, I should mention the golfers that have the best stats. So, obviously, DJ is number one in the world. He has the highest score. And I'm trying to get the, the, the golfer with the best stat for any of these stats close to 100 until we get to the recent form stats. But that's how my scoring works. Um, DJ, the best golfer in the field for Bermuda stats. Uh, and that's what this grass average, it's their average finishing position going back to 2013. And then I'm looking at the top 10 success rate, basically on Bermuda, uh, Bermuda surfaces, again, trying to get the best golfer to 100 looking at, uh, bogey avoidance, birdie or better. My recent form stats, I watered down, but basically it's, it's trying to get their scores to 100 and then divide their score or multiply their score by a fraction. I don't remember what it is. It could be 50%. Um, it might be just slightly lower than that or maybe higher. I can't remember, but it's something like that. Basically, I don't want someone who just played one tournament in the last eight weeks. That's what, sorry. My recent form stats look at the last eight weeks, but I don't want one golfer over the last eight weeks to have a top 10 finish and really jack up their scores for recent form. It's happened uh, a lot of guys that are in like the 6K range or 7K range end up being like 10th on the model. And it's like, what the heck? What for? And you can see their DK points were like skyrocketing for recent form. Their recent form average was high. Everything was 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 really good. So that's why uh, I kind of curtailed the stat. But I do want to add it so those that have been playing good within the last eight weeks get a little bit of a boost. And then I'm looking at season long DK average and season long scoring average that creates a score. And based off that score, I create a ranking. So we can talk about the guys ranked inside the top 20 for my sweet spot score. Brooks Kepka is your number one guy followed by Dustin Johnson. I like DJ probably twice as much as I look like Brooks this week. Interesting. I, I covered this in the preview. Both of these golfers usually play the week before the U.S. Open. And dependent on how well they play the week prior to the U.S. Open determines how well they play at the U.S. Open. Honestly, Brooks has more top 20 finishes the week before when he either finishes, well, let's just say top 20 at the U.S. Open. But more importantly, when he wins. He plays the week before, has middling results. So that's why I kind of am a little off of Brooks. I could see him making the cut, finishing 37th, somewhere between 37th and 50th. That's when he's won his U.S. Opens, having uh, finishes like that. Dustin Johnson, on the, on the other hand, when he's played well at the U.S. Open, he's had top 10 finishes the week before. So for those that are worried about whether DJ is going to take the serious or whatever, the proof is in the pudding. Both of these golfers care about the week prior leading into at least the U.S. Open. I couldn't tell you about any of the other majors, but it appears to be that way uh, for the U.S. Open. So I, I don't mind anchoring either of those two golfers. And they're number one and two in the model. I don't really care to talk about the rest of the golfers. I just want to mention some abnormalities, if we want to call it that. One of them being Matt Fitzpatrick at 10400 is ranked seventh. And he has three golfers priced lower than him ahead of him. In the sweet spot score, Harris English, Sung JM, and Tommy Fleetwood. So when I look at something like that, it kind of gives me a little bit of pause. Like, okay, so Matt Fitzpatrick, not, you know, as elite as, say, a Hatton, Johnson, or Kepka. So I don't know. I mean, it, it basically, my ownership won't be as strong. 
but I st- I'm still going to play him. I he's a he's a he's a great play this week. I think he can do really well. But seeing these guys right here, that's kind of uh, a surprise. The rest of the golfers below, not much of a surprise. It's your nine, your eight, and your seven K range. So I don't have really anything else to talk about when it comes to sweet spot score. Now I use the sweet spot score in combination with the highlighted colors over here under game. So if we go ahead, sort by game, we can see your first group. The first game is the first group off of hole one. And the second game is the first group off of hole 10. And it fluctuates that way. It kind of goes between the two. Um, the reason that golfers are colored over here or highlighted, how it, it depends. If their scoring average is better than their field average, this color will be yellow. If their DK average is better than their field average, this is season long stats, by the way, uh, it'll be this light green color that you see for Ricky Barnes as well as Tommy Fleetwood. Is it Ricky Barnes? Yeah. Uh, And then the dark green means both of those stats are better than field average. So again, that is season long scoring average and season long DK average. If they're better than the field average, they get this highlighted color. And then based off of the, the golfers in the group, if all three of them have uh, this color highlighted, doesn't matter which color, I am going to highlight the sweet spot score. Now it depends on the score of the sweet spot score. I know this is getting uh, convoluted, but if the cumulative score is under 100, I'm giving them a dark green color. If it isn't, they're gonna get this light green color. So it kind of goes in conjunction to what you see colored over here. I mean, you can see this group is not the greatest group. This group is, and all of them are dark green. Uh, That doesn't really apply for this group, but we'll get further into it. We're going to anchor around groups that are colored in this dark green color. And I'll bring that up, but we have some light green uh, groups to talk about as well. Actually, no. No, 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 no. We're just going to skip all of that. Uh... What I want to show you, let's talk about the light green groups and then get into our anchor groups because that's how we're going to do this. So we're going to we're going to look at it this way. Um, our first group that I want to talk about that isn't in our anchor groups is Pat Perez, Ryan Armour, and Austin Cook. Each of them has their scoring average better than field average. Pat Perez has DK average also better than field average. So that's why he's this dark green color. And the group as a whole, I don't mind. It's not a terrible group. I think they all play pretty decent on Bermuda, if I'm not mistaken. It's okay. Uh, all of them have over 5% top 10% uh, top ten success rate on Bermuda, so that's good. But their 2021 Bermuda does not look good. So probably going to halt my breaks on that group. I, I'll have some shares. Like I'll, I'll, I'll use some of them, not a lot. Let's get to our next light green group. Do we have one? Yes, we do. It will be Rory Sabatini, Adam Shank, and Tyler McCumber. Uh, I don't mind any of these golfers. They have decent bucket scores for what we have assigned them. Uh, I don't care that much about Rory Sabatini, but when I usually say that, he does pretty decent. He did try qualifying for the U.S. Open, so there's that. Uh, Did not make it and did not play at the Memorial, so we don't really have to worry about that. Each one of them has a success rate of over 5% on Bermuda tracks for finishing inside the top 10, so that's good. Their Bermuda overall average isn't terrible, but Tyler McCumber does not have that great of stats. I mean, 68.08 for overall Bermuda and 66.29 on 2020, uh, 2021 Bermuda. We could find better golfers elsewhere. It's not going to completely make me fade him, but I I, I just don't like him. And I think that actually covers... Oh, one more group. Surprise, surprise. It is Garrick Higo, which is a darling for many. Ryan Brem and Wes Roach. I could not care less for this group. Uh, Garrick Higo, very interesting, but outside of that, not... uh, I'm not thrilled about it if i'm being honest let's let's take a look no one has good bermuda stats garrick higo has zero because he hasn't played a pga tour event on bermuda yet um recent form average so 
Wow, how does he have a recent form score? What? Oh, he must have played the PGA Championship, right? That has to have been it. I got to double check this. Yeah, PGA Championship. Okay, so he's 64th there. All right, that makes sense. Um, I, it, it, it surprised me to see he had a recent form average. Uh, and then you can see what his strokes gain stats were at that tournament. To me, the group doesn't play that much on the PGA Tour. I don't trust them, so I'm, I'm going to stop talking about them. Let's go ahead and get into our, um, our anchor buckets. So I've done this for the last three weeks, and each one of these pairings has a top 20 finish. Uh, not this like these particular golfers, but every time I do this. So if I highlight every third golfer, obviously these guys are paired together. Um, one golfer in the, over the last three three weeks when I do this for each of these groups. So let's say this. Let's just highlight the, the first guy in each of these groups. These guys are going to finish inside the top 20. Now, not these guys specifically, but how it's been working when I do these anchor buckets one guy out of each group finishes inside the top 20. So this is how we're going to start. We're going to anchor our lineups uh, using it this way. And thankfully, I'm already ahead of you guys. I'm going to bring the optimizer over here. And I'll scroll in a little bit so you guys can see it just a little bit better. I put these numbers here uh, for values. So you can see DJ has this one next to him. I put Kevin Kisner and Ben Martin. Is it Ben Martin? Is he actually in that group? JT Poston should be that guy, not Ben Martin. Oh, I looked at the wrong guy. It is JT Poston. My bad. So JT Poston, Kevin Kisner, and Dustin Johnson. They get this a uh, one value. It's my favorite group. So obviously those golfers are golfing together. So therefore on the optimizer, what I'm going to do is essentially if I'm playing DJ, I'm going to lock him in and then I, I don't care to pair some of these guys up. Like it doesn't matter to me, but I'm going to do something like this and then run the optimizer. That way I can't pair any of those guys up, but I'm also going to look at pairs. So I'm going to put a one together with another golfer from a different group. So I could literally put one and three together and do a DJ Brooks Kepka lineup. Um, to me, even if we have, you know, each each group possess a top 10 finisher, sometimes it's going to be like we're, we're not going to be able to roster, you know, each of these golfers. Like, take the most expensive golfer out of each of these groups. So Sungjae, DJ, um, I guess Luke List. Matt Fitzpatrick and Brooks Kepka. These guys could literally each one of them finish inside the top 10 or all of all of the guys that I've unselected, they could finish inside the top 10. And if they do so, the most you could roster is two of them. Like you you or maybe three with Luke Liss. but you know, if D, if it's DJ who finishes first and Brooks who finishes second, that's making up 22,500 of the 50,000 you can roster. You can't really make lineups with those guys, and you're not going to be able to put like a Sung in with them either. So to me, I want to pair some of these golfers. I want to. I just want to create twosomes of you know groups or golfers in different groups. So basically, I'm going to be selecting you know I'm going to be selecting a Dustin Johnson to go along with maybe a Luke List or a Tyrrell Hatton or even an Ian Poulter. I really like Ian Poulter this week. So yeah, I'm probably going to start here on a lot of my lineups and go from there. Hopefully, you know, these guys finish inside the top 10, but these would be your anchor plays. Anybody that's on here, again, it goes by each group. So select, you know, have fun. Select one guy out of each of these groups and see what kind of lineups you can create, you know, with the ones that you do like. If you were to try to create lineups with each of these guys uh, in it, basically to figure out, how many different lineups you can create by just selecting two. All you would have to do, so to figure out a permutation, if we don't select one of the, the golfers in this group, we take one of them, right? So there's three, there's, a, there's up to three golfers. So we, we go three and then for the rest of them, 
there are 12 golfers to choose from. We just times it by 12. That creates the permutations, the different combinations of twosomes you can create. So we can start 36 of our lineups with different twosomes. And then going from there, we're going to duplicate some of those, which is fine. I'm sure some of you guys don't mind doing that. So that's pretty cool. Like, that's awesome. I can create 36 different twosomes. Again, that's going to include like a Dustin Johnson and a Brooks Kepka put, being put together. Creating a very strong Stars and Scrubs lineup. I shouldn't say strong. Uh, it's going to be very top heavy. So actually, when we put those golfers together, um, shoot. I did not update my lineup construction page. Usually I have something, so this would be the memorial. If you recall, this is how I do my anchor buckets. Um, here, let me do this. Let's put a Jordan Spieth and a John Rom together from last week. They're very similar in price. Uh, we're gonna be $200 off. So 6,900, and that was with 11.3 and 11.1. 11, four and 11, one it's going to be just slightly off. So we're going to see a, around $6,900 for your remaining players. You could probably get there though. I mean, there are some really low 6k golfers that you could pair up with DJ and Brooks. Um, I just don't think both of them finish inside the top 10 and at their price tag, if they don't finish one and two, I, I just don't see why you pair them up together. So we could cross that off. So you can take one less combination from that so we only have 35 uh different two sums and you could do that with any of these guys it's up to you guys but yeah these are the golfers that i will be selecting from uh creating my my two sums from uh and really i guess talking about these groups i that's one thing i didn't do i like them all the only group i don't really so much care for is the luke list sep straka and camilo vijegas group um, and I'm also kind of a little wary of JT Poston. So Poston made the U.S. Open qualifier. So he's in the U.S. Open. I'm not sure if he's going to withdraw. Maybe he will. Maybe he won't. But you can see Kazire and Snedeker did. Kazire was one of those golfers that I, I kind of had said I'm a little wary of because, oh, he missed the cut. So we don't have to worry too much about that. JT Poston might be tired, though. You know, made the weekend at the Memorial, as you can see right here. I think you guys can see that. Yeah, made the weekend. And then Lucas Glover is the other guy, too. He made the weekend. And a lot of golfers or a lot of people in the industry are on him this week. So if there's a natural pivot because of quote-unquote ownership, you know I don't care about ownership. This might be the, the, the natural pivot to do. So going from here, uh, we're not going to do anchor buckets. I think we just go straight into building lineups, seeing how the optimizer selects some of these golfers. I will share with you guys that I just kept the conditionals from last week in here because they're pretty conservative, not terrible. Um, you can see a lot of the fives and sixes. I'm only allowing a max of one time to be played. We don't have course history buckets. We don't have last year buckets, so we're not going to worry about anything being populated in there. But for the rest of these, it's pretty standard. You know, we don't care how many last week ones that we put in there, uh, especially for this week. There are, uh, I forgot to mention, actually, there is something I could cover. I added how many are in this year for each of these buckets. So we can cover it like this. So last week, you know, there's 115 last week ones. Just by numbers alone, we're going to see a bunch of those guys inside the top 10. Uh, some of these other ones, it's going to be hard to justify. So probably not too worried about that. And then recent form is really the only other bucket we care about. We already went over the fact that there were zero recent form fours. Everything else is pretty, you know, pretty standard. These are your two volume buckets, I guess, with this bucket being another one. But I'll probably avoid this one. So looking at the um, optimizer, when we go to recent form fives, Maybe I'll, op should I open that up to two? In a field like this, I might have to. Yeah, I'll open it up to two. That's fine. So you can kind of already see, I, I already ran the optimizer once. This is my, actually, let me run it again because I did just change something. So the optimal lineup as is with no conditionals in there. 
uh, is Tyrrell Hatton, Tommy Fleetwood, Brant Snedeker, Sepp Straka, Richie Wierenski, and Ches Reeve. Honestly, this, this lineup is dynamite. A lot of people kind of off on Ches Reeve, but Ches Reeve shot the lowest U.S. Open qualifying score, I think, at Columbus, if I'm not mistaken. If I go back, let me find Reeve. I have all of this over here, so... Oh, I don't have a score. Brookside, Columbus, Ohio. So I want to say I have this sorted by the best finishers. And Ches Reeve was the best finisher out of his group at the qualifier. Yeah, RCB is there. JT Poston, EVR. Uh, a lot of these guys in there. Sung King, he withdrew, obviously. So made the uh, US Open qualifier and withdrew. But anyways, moving on from there. Um... Ches Reeve, I think, is a great play. I think he's, I shouldn't say he's rounding into form, but at $6,800, this is when he actually hits for us for lineups. So I don't mind Ches Reeve. Now let's go ahead and um, pair up some of these guys that we were just talking about. I want to put together a DJ lineup and an Ian Poulter lineup. So that's what I'm going to start with. So go DJ, Poulter, where are you? Right here. We'll go ahead, put those guys in. And I don't want to select anybody else from either a, a bucket four, which I'm sure we probably won't, but just want to do that with also golfers from bucket one. And run our lineup. Let's see who the best one is or the best the optimal lineup. So we have Dustin Johnson, Ian Poulter, Brant Snedeker, of course, Sepp Straka, Henrik Norlander, and Nick Watney. I don't know about that one. Nick Watney is not a golfer I care that much about. In fact, I think what I'm going to do is put everyone that's down here at 6,200 as a no. I, I just, I'll, I'll remove some of these for golfers that I do like, but let's go ahead and Remove the fact I, I I just don't want to mess around with these golfers. I do like Scott Harrington? I'll open that up. Um, William McGirt is an ambassador here, so he's played here before. I'll I'll keep it open for him. Ben Taylor is not a terrible rookie. Yeah, I'll keep all of that as is. Yeah, we'll keep Watney out. I, I, I'm going to keep uh, Chris Baker out as well. I was just about to say I don't mind him, but no, we'll, we'll keep him out. And actually, you know what? Let's go ahead and remove some of these guys as well. I, I don't care for some of them. I don't mind Bryson Nimmer. He's a local guy, a rookie, but local. Um... I don't mind Fabian Goma or Fabian Gomez, but so Lucas Beergard, I don't mind Gomez. I don't mind. Sorry to do this on the fly, but I figured you guys can kind of see my, my thought process with some of these golfers and go from there. Brian Gay. Uh, we talked about him obviously earlier on in the year, Jason Kokrak wins at shadow Creek. Uh, and then Patrick Cantley wins at shoot. What are those tournaments called? One is the Zozo championship. I think that's the one Patrick Cantley won. And the other one's CJ cup. That was Jason Kokrak. So Jason Kokrak won the CJ cup, uh, at shadow Creek. And then Cantley won the Zozo championship. And I can't remember where that was at, but the guy who followed right after that was the Bermuda championship. That was Brian Gay. Well, last week, Patrick Cantley just won the Memorial. The week prior, Jason Kokrak won the Charles Schwab Challenge. So if patterns repeat themselves, Brian Gay is your winner. Um, so let's go ahead and just keep Brian Gay open. I don't care uh, to... Okay, we'll we'll skip past this. But let's go ahead and run that again so we don't see Nick Watney. Probably won't see some of the other guys either. Okay, uh, almost equally as bad. Okay, 
All right, so now I have to mess around with this because I, I don't care for how, it, how it's selecting golfers. Let's make sure we have two of those, one of those, and a max of one and a max of, oh, no, 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 no. Maybe we do just two, that's fine. I don't want, ever want to see three 6K golfers. That's not my style. I don't, optimal lineups are rarely built that way. So I, I'm not going to go that route. Here we go. Finally, something decent. DJ, Ian Poulter, Brant Snedeker, Richie Wierenski, Bryce Garnett, and Josh Teeter. Okay, I can buy it. Not terrible if we save that. Run it again because everything's based off of ownership. We won't see those four golfers after DJ and Poulter. So this will be your second best lineup that's going to show up. And that's Martin Laird, Substraka, Byung-Hun Ann, and Hudson Swafford. Okay. Run it again and see who the third one is. And we're not going to go past the third one. Uh, Johnny Vegas, Adam Schenk, and Henrik, or Henrik Norlander, and Andrew Putnam. So not terrible. I don't mind that whatsoever. Let's go ahead and delete that. Um... This actually would be best if it was live. I could ask you guys, what would, who would you like me to see? Or who would you like to see? Let's actually put, um, I want to put Sung J M together with Dustin Johnson. So Sung J is a two. Go ahead and make sure the twos are blocked. So that's Brent Snedeker. And run this optimizer. So our best DJ, Sung J M, and I, I'm only going to run one. Bryce Garnett, Andrew Putnam, Rory Sabatini, and Richie Wierenski. Okay. Uh, let's see here. I, I just noticed, or I, I can't help but feel if I continue to do this, I might go through all 36 combinations. Um, let's just go with the top guy of each of them. That's fine. Or, or, or what we think might be the best play. Okay. So let's go with like a Brooks. Let's, maybe we'll just copy that same thing we did. I'm going to go ahead and just remove that. That's, that's too much time. I'm wasting too much time. Uh, our best Brooks and Sungjae lineup. It's probably going to be the same go golfers. If it decides to even function, come on, guys. Come on, guys. This is ridiculous. Let's go. When technology does not listen, does not go your way. Who would be the next one, do you think we would want to go with? Like a Hatton? Hatton Brooks? Hatton and Mitchell? Maybe that's what I should do. Just go with, okay, finally, we have one. Brooks, Sungjae, Martin Laird, Richie Wierenski, Adam, Shank, and Andrew Putnam. All right, so this is what we're going to do. I'm just going to take this off to the side, take a look at these golfers here. So DJ, let's just find our best Sungjae lineup. That's how I'm going to do this. We're going to just grab some of these guys. Maybe we'll find, you know, six golfers that do show up. Sungjae has Tyrrell Hatton in there, uh, Snedeker, Straka, Shank, Putnam. I think we're just going to see those same golfers over and over again, if I'm going to be honest. Let's see here. Let's put a Ty Hatton lineup, and I'm sure it's just going to have Sungjae in it. It might not even change. Oh, it does. Wow. So Hatton, Fleetwood, Snedeker, we already saw that group. Perfect. Um... How about a Poulter group? Maybe put Poulter and Hatton together. Actually, they're playing together, aren't they? Yeah, I don't want to put those guys together. Let's just see what the best Poulter group is. Goes with uh, Tyrrell Hatton. Let's go ahead and say no to that. I think Tyrrell Hatton's getting picked so much because he's not that far behind Brooks or DJ. And with the $800 savings you get, or the $1,200 savings you get from Dustin Johnson, it's a no-brainer. 
thought premise was like, yeah, there's there's many more points to be had with Tyrrell Hatton than DJ. So Kepka is your best fit to go with Poulter. Uh, and then there's Snedeker. Same three golfers that we see. Okay. So hard hard to you know get a good gauge of of some of these other golfers. Obviously, when I run the optimizer with all of the percentages, these guys aren't going to show up as much. Um, they will show up, but just obviously not as much. Um, but yeah, I, I could run these two golfers four or five times together, find out my my four or five best lineups to go with them. But it's really difficult not having anything to put in our conditionals for a bucket system, primarily because it's a one-off event. Um, but again, we do have values for the bucket system. We just don't have the percentages to go with it. So I will just use kind of a generic ownership model uh, and also kind of put in my own twist. So I'll look at each one of these golfers, you know, change the ownerships that I see based off of if I like the golfer or not. Uh, and a lot of it's going to be heavily dependent on Bermuda stats. So a lot of my ownerships come from Bermuda. Um, if I were to open this back up to everybody, you know, I, I like to look at this and and try to base ownerships off of what I see here. Um, I might not own, I it's not a perfect science, but I might not own some of these golfers more than their Bermuda uh, percentage. Here you go with, uh, wow, Luke Donald, 18.18%. Um, Brian Gay, 14.49. Some good 6K values down here. Kyrdek is also up there. Kevin Chappell, I've heard first round leader stuff with him, but he is a strokes in a bucket six golfer, 90th ranked on the model. Don't really care for him, but that's good Bermuda stats. All right. I think that's where I'm going to end it. So it's, like I said, it was a short video, just slightly shorter, 41 minutes, as opposed to the 50 or an hour I typically do. Hopefully you guys found a little bit of benefit to, to this video. I think, oh, here's one thing I forgot to mention. In the comment section below, tell me who your favorite anchor play is from these golfers and i will give you the optimizer for this week i don't know how well it's going to perform um but if you wanted an optimizer to build lineups you certainly can get it so give me your best picks based off of the groupings that we have that's not correctly done there you go these groups here give me your favorite play you don't have to give me a favorite play from each of them but just give me a favorite play and I will provide you the optimizer. What you have to do is you got to be subscribed to the channel, get a like the video, leave me that comment. Uh, and then you, on YouTube, you're going to have to reach out to me because I don't get to see your email through YouTube unless you provide it on your channel. So email sweetspotdfs at gmail.com and I will get back to you. Just say you're interested in the optimizer and I'll send it your way. Um, on Twitter, all you got to do is like my original post, retweet it. Obviously, you got to be following me, and I'll reach out to you with it. So you guys can get the optimizer. Uh, you already you just saw it. If I show you it again, this is what you'll get. You'll get all this information. I'll also provide the dream sheet. This is everything that we're looking at, just in a slightly different format because it's not a very good copy from Google Sheets over to Microsoft Excel. Um, but yeah, you can get that. All you got to do is what I just said, and I'll do something similar for the U S open. So obviously definitely check those videos as well. So let's go ahead and get out of this or get out of here. Thank you guys for watching. Please leave a like comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And I think the next video I'm going to see you in is a U.S. open preview before a review for this one. So we'll see you then. All right. Bye.